Combat mindset. I don't believe in it. Here's why. If this is your first time watching me, my name is Jay. I'm a retired Green Beret out of 3rd Special Forces Group. The intent behind this channel, guys, is to share my knowledge and wisdom with the next generation. So if you haven't done so already, like and subscribe to help me reach that goal. I appreciate it. If you guys haven't noticed, the channel has doubled in subscribers overnight. So I want to take this time to say thank you to all the folks coming over from Canadian Prepper. Let me know in the comment section below, guys, how I can better serve you. I appreciate it. If you're looking at going to selection, check out the links below, guys. It'll take you to my Patreon where I have a variety of prep courses that you could use to help you get ready for Special Forces Assessment and Selection. Or if you're just looking to learn how to prep your feet, how to pack a rucksack, how to conduct basic and advanced land nav, you can go there and also take a look at all those courses, guys. I appreciate it. With that said, guys, let's get into combat mindset and why I don't believe in that term. Guys, combine mindset is best described as a mental state that helps individuals respond to certain high threat situations. Combat mindset involves being prepared, alert, and being ready to react at any given time. Combat mindset is often associated with the military, police force, and other government agencies. So per this definition, guys, only military or folks that are around high threat areas or folks that handle guns all the time can technically have the combat mindset. That's just my interpretation of the actual definition. Let's put a few things in perspective, guys. Within the United States, less than 1% join the military. Within that 1%, guys, less than 1% of that join combat arms. And within combat arms, less than 1% actually join special forces. And off that military crowd, variety of them will get out and they'll go join the police force or some type of government agency. So per this definition, guys, you're telling me that less than 1% of the United States population has the combat mindset. I don't believe that at all, guys. I think we as a nation, we as people around the world, all have the intestinal fortitude to step up and do whatever needs to be done whenever we're put in a situation that's high threat or that's immoral or unethical. To me, that is the very definition of combat mindset. But I think the term is associated with the military, with the police so often that regular folks like me now since I retire and like you don't think that we have what it takes to do whatever needs to be done to protect our loved ones. So with that said, guys, I want to strip the title of combat mindset away from the term and just put the protective mindset in front of it. Because at the end of the day, I truly believe that we are all protectors. When I was on the battlefield running and gunning, I wasn't there because I was some combat junkie that just wanted to run and gun for no reason. I was there to protect the American people. I was there to protect my family. I was fighting to protect my loved ones. And the skills that I've had just enable me to conduct that task. Now just think about it. Every day there's a child born in the hospital. Every day, men and women are becoming protectors. The biggest difference between you and I is I have the skills needed to actually act on my protective instincts. And if you have them too, awesome. But if you don't, stay with me. I'm going to give you a few things that you could practice to help you enhance your protective nature. Guys, imagine you're out in public and you're at the grocery store. And out of nowhere, somebody comes and they snatch your wife's purse and they take off running. You as a protector, you as a man, must do everything that you need to do to protect your wife, your kids. You as a wife, if your husband is not with you, you have to do whatever you can to protect your daughter, your son. Do you have what it takes to execute? Now, if the answer is no, here's why. So in the military, guys, I practice a lot of shooting. I'm at the range all the time. And what that's doing is, even though I have the protective instinct, I have to have the files to back it up. If I don't have a file, a folder to access stored in my mind, whenever I'm presented with those high threat situations, I'm not going to have anything that I can access to do work. So in my case, I've been to the range. I have all those files. 
So when a situation presents itself, all I got to do is access that training, access that file without even thinking, grab my pistol and do work. If you don't have those files, whenever you're put in that situation, you won't know what to do. So you'll revert back to self-reservation, to cowarding, to hiding because you don't have the training. So how do you fix that? How do you get that protective instinct backed up with some type of training, some type of plan? So you got to put those files in those folders. You got to put files in your mind. You got to put data up there. So when you're faced with those situations, you can react and protect your loved ones. So how do you do that? Guys, here's a few ways that you can start to nurture the skills that you need to be able to protect your loved ones. Number one, you got to get to the range. You got to start putting data in that hard drive. You got to start shooting different drills. You got to put yourself in those high threat situation on the range that forces you to think outside the box. And once you do that, you'll have files up there. And if you're presented with a situation, whether it's a carjack, a robbery, a workplace shooting, you will have some type of file to access that'll tell you what to do. I know all around the country there's individuals conducting those type of courses. Most of them are former military, former police. They can help you get the training that you need to be able to survive and protect your loved ones, guys. Now, aside from getting on the range, guys, another very important aspect of being able to protect your loved ones and nurture that protective nature is to make sure that you're in good shape. Now, imagine me being on the battlefield running and gunning and something happens to my brothers in arms. One of them gets shot to where I need to maneuver, put rounds down range, and drag them out of harm's way. If I'm not in shape, I'm not going to be able to do that. I won't be able to, to practice my protective nature, right? Because my physical fitness won't allow me to do that. It's the same concept back here, guys. If you can't run around the corner to chase down a bad guy or do whatever you need to do, then what good are you as a protector? So that's another aspect of it, guys. Make sure you're in shape so you can take all the necessary steps to protect the ones that you love. Next, we're gonna look at mental repetition, guys. We live in a world where everybody thinks that everything is go lucky. The few that does it, they know who they are. But you can't just go about your day as if nothing's ever gonna happen. If you put yourself in the mental state that, hey, I'm always ready for whatever might take place, then you'll be prepared for when it does happen and you'll react accordingly. This is a quick mental repetition or a quick mental exercise that I like to do. Whenever I'm in public places, I envision getting carjacked in the parking lot. Then I'll go through step by step of what I would do if that situation presents itself. Right? If somebody comes to my window and they have a pistol, this is what I'm gonna do. Right? I'm gonna grab my conceal, I'm gonna make sure he doesn't see it, I'm gonna get out of that car in this way, I'm gonna attempt to de-escalate, and if not, I'm gonna preserve my life, whether it's putting rounds down range or hand-to-hand -hand combat, whatever it may be. You need to go through those steps and keep yourself in that heightened state. Because when you least expect it, that's when it's gonna happen. Another thing that you can practice to nurture that protective nature, guys, is situational awareness. Whenever you enter a place, make sure you know where the exits are. Make sure you sit against the wall to where you can see everything that's in front of you. Not allowing folks to sit behind your back. That's one thing that you can do, guys. It might seem off to you, but trust me, no one's looking at you and they won't notice exactly what you're doing, especially if they're not trained. Guys, I hope this information served you in one way, shape, or form. If you have anything else that folks could practice to help them get in the right mindset to protect the ones that they love, leave them in the comment section below, guys. Until next time, I appreciate you guys tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next video.